Here are three must-dos for every Ski-Doo Rev platform. Um, so if you have a snowmobile that kind of looks like this, well, it looks like this, from 2002 to 2007, uh, after 2007, they moved the secondary clutch higher. Uh, they, anyway, they moved it forward so you have more of a foot rest. So you can put your foot a little bit more forward. So if one of these, 2002, 2003, 2007, I think it was 2002, 2007, doesn't matter. If you have one of these, you're going to have these issues, probably. The air box, which we'll get to in a minute, you might not have. But these other issues you're probably going to have. If you have an electric start, the first issue is a silly spring. So this is a spring that's already been replaced. That is a brand new starter that I bought, uh, and it just, it, right from the very beginning, seemed to have some issues. What I noticed was a ting, 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 ting. And I thought it was the front muffler. I thought it was springs. I thought it was maybe rub, rub, something rubbing on the tin. And then I thought, oh, maybe it was somehow it was my suspension component because I could really hear it when I was going over bumps. I couldn't figure out what the heck it was. And then one day, and you would have heard this already if you've seen my other video, uh, then one day it just, it was crazy. I put it in reverse and I thought the engine was blowing. I thought I, I don't know, I don't know if a piston had ruptured, an arm had gone, I, I had no idea. But I was freaking out, and as it turns out, it was just this thing, the Bendix, hitting the primary. And you can see a little bit of uh, shiny, buffered area um, on the main. Here's what the old starter looks like. So before I put the brand new starter on, I had this one. This is the Bendix, this thing right here. A lot of guys suggest that when you're doing this particular repair, you just replace the whole Bendix. But given that I had a brand new starter, I wasn't going to do that. Anyway, it comes with that. And then it comes with a spring on it, and then it comes with this cap. Well, you can see the cap partially goes over the spring, holds it in place. And then you, you push this thing back. There's a little recess spot uh, right in there for this C-clip. All right, so you put the C-clip in there. No big deal. Getting it off is easy. You just put a tiny little screwdriver under that, pops right out, no big deal. Getting it on... <laughs> Uh, getting it on is a different story. What I ended up doing with the other starter C-clip is that I cut off about maybe a fifth, maybe a quarter of the C-clip. Some guys just cut them in half. And the reason it doesn't matter uh, how you really do it is because once you get them on that recessed part, this little piece, which will be up here, slides back over and keeps the C-clip in place. So the C-clip isn't actually keeping itself in place. It's just preventing this from backing out. So depending on what you want to do with that, whether you want to cut it in half or cut off a quarter or whatever, highly recommended. The first one I had, which was brand new again, uh, I could get it over this. I just hit it with a hammer, ding, 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 gently. But it would warp because the pieces would be pushed apart and it would go over warped. And it doesn't matter. I spent at least 45 minutes to an hour trying to pull it together and pull this over, sleeve back over it and it just wouldn't go. Anyway, not a fun experience. So this is the spring that came on this starter, and I think this is, this is slightly incorrect. I'm not sure if BRP changed how it built the starters or if some guy before me with a sled had the wrong, had the aftermarket one. Anyway, the one I have now is the right one for the machine, and it came with this spring. Not, uh, not working. Not going to work. That's a source of so much stress and anxiety. I want to I wanna burn you. If you weren't metal, I'd burn you. This, if you go on Do Talk and look for search for a guy named Eddie, I, I bought two of these in January of 2017. So he's still selling these, still sells from the States. Uh, I'm in Canada, shipped to Canada, two of these, I don't know, 30 bucks or something like that. Anyway, obviously much larger, but also heavier gauge steel. Unless I'm, no, I'm, I'm sure it's heavier gauge steel, it steel just feels like it. I didn't think that was going to fit. I was sure it was just, uh, if this was that, if I was putting it on that starter, I thought, oh, you know, it might fit because they're comparable in size. But the starter I had, I thought, no, it's not going to work. Thankfully, when I got it on, it does work. Initially, it didn't. It actually, the Bendix came out and stuck. I hit the start button just to try it out. I did not have the primary on, the primary clutch. So it overextended. It went too far. If you've got the primary on, which you should, and then you try and start it, the spring doesn't, doesn't overextend, it doesn't bind up. It works perfectly well. Everything, everything goes swimmingly. All right, number two. Number two thing you should really consider doing. Sorry I didn't take off the uh, clutches. I just couldn't bring myself to bring the clutches off. Do you see that spring, that sort of uh, the zinc-covered spring there? 
There are actually two connected together. You can see it's quite uh, small, relatively speaking. It connects to a slightly bigger spring. And then it connects to the, um, you can see that piece of metal back there. It connects, that's the arm for the oil pump. I was going through as much oil as I was gas. I was convinced my sled was going to burn down because, uh, you know, you, I think you're actually creating a lean condition when you have too much oil. It doesn't have enough gas and it, it doesn't have enough air. It does something. It does something weird. Anyway, too much oil apparently isn't horrible, but it was freaking me out. So a lot of guys end up doing this, where they put a spring on that. Some do it in a little more complicated fashion. They have a, a bolt or a nut that they put on the end here, and then they put a hole through the screw, or the bolt nut rather, sorry. They put a hole through it and they put the spring on that. I just put it around the side. It works perfectly, it's actually quite tight. There was some previous damage to the side there uh, before I put the, I put some brackets on there, some um, stabilizing brackets to make the, the body stronger. Anyway, it fits perfectly. Here's the deal though. Uh, well, first, that's zinc. So it's gonna rust if I'm not gonna keep an eye on it, if I don't keep it lubed up with an anti-rust product of some kind is going to rust, which is not cool. Uh, and two, to get the right spring that doesn't add any pressure to the throttle, I had to get a lot of springs to try out. Uh, I got a number of them, um, many different sizes, because I really I have no idea. how I didn't know how the spring was going to feel in my hand. I ended up going something similar. To, even this is too strong. You can, too strong. Um, this is deceptive because you'd think, oh, that must be stronger than than that. But no, this is actually lighter. This side is lighter than, than that one. After I had done all that, I actually found this spring from an old carb on a snowblower. And if I had known I had that, I would have used it. Uh, it. It would have been perfect because I could have looped this end around something. And then, anyway, uh, so if you have something like that around, great. One of the issues I've had, and I apologize, everything's so dirty. One of the issues I've had with this particular machine is this is killing my thumb. After an hour, hour two, couple hours, uh, my hand is just shot. It just doesn't have the strength. And, and I'm not a small guy. Uh, I'm over six feet and I'm pretty strong. I'm, I'm no Hercules, but that's not right. And as it turns out, the carb slider slides on this thing, it just it's just difficult. It's got two carbs, so twice as much you're pulling fine but then you have the oil pump it doesn't have a lot of resistance fine but then you got to put another spring on the oil pump you're just making your life that much harder so I spent a lot of time making sure that this was going to be as light as possible on the pull of the thumb on the throttle and I think it worked out okay uh, I'll let you know there obviously there's going to be a little more pressure but it sorry that wasn't very good filming there um, there's very little pressure on it right now. There's enough pressure on it that it's not going to come off. Like it's not, I don't want it bouncing off on the trail. And then it just gets progressively harder uh, as you pull through the range. So hopefully that will help with the oil because that was nuts and oil's not cheap. Again, finish the sled, rebuild the sled. Two defective parts, two defective things. Some uh, are saying that the, the cam or whatever it is, however the oil pump works, just gets worn down and there's a certain spacing issue and you should have it rebuilt. You can do that. Uh, I would prefer this issue and then maybe in a few years I'm just going to get a new oil pump because that's, that's just not cool. All right, number three. You ready for number three? Number three is this right here. This is the air box that goes on, so it'll go this way. So drop everything on the ground. It looks like that, something like that, on your door panel. Then you take off three screws, which I dropped on the ground. Mine look like this. Yours might look like something else. It's just three screws, no big deal. Because what you will find is that while the box is relatively airtight, I mean, it's not airtight. There are a lot of ways that air can get in. Uh, obviously, you want air going in the top, Behind the door, where you can't see, are one, two, three, four, five, are five holes here. Can you see? Yeah, there you go. Five holes. The issue I was having is that this is a new belt, and I was really surprised when I took the cover off 
there was just belt dust everywhere. I have this, oh, you know what, I need to fix that. I have a floating, I have this clutch floating. Well, it's not floating right now. I gotta put another, I have to put another washer in there to ease the stress on the belt. But I don't want the belt dust going in here. So I went to the dollar store and I got a pair of pantyhose. You put a pair, pair of pantyhose over the exterior filter. So this is the filter that would go in the box on the outside of the door. You can get SLP, sell some stuff. Uh, uh, the price is prohibitive. This was like two bucks. And I know this won't repel water like the nicer stuff. They call it pre-filters. If you want to Google pre-filter, you'll get much better material than just this. But as a start, this is what I'm using. Uh, a little embarrassing going into a dollar store to buy pantyhose. Uh, kind of felt like I was going to be a bank robber or something. I don't, what do I need a pantyhose for? Anyway, and then here, I cover it over um, because it's just going to suck in the belt dust. There are other places that's going to bring in air, like here. Uh, some big gaps at the very bottom. See the bottom there? Uh, there are gaps there because that's where it hooks on to the side of the, the door. So I know it's not a perfect solution. But if this, while driving, gets covered uh, with ice and snow and the air can't get into your sled, that's a definite no-no. So that's why these holes are here, as I understand it. Now I have to keep an eye on this. Because if I'm not keeping a close eye on this, and I'm not keeping a close eye on that getting all clogged with brake dust, I could find myself in a bit of a situation. So this is a risky maneuver in a way, as is this, unless I'm going to be paying close attention. If you're hitting a lot of powder and so on. And neither of these are going to prevent any water from getting in because it's the cheaper stuff. But I would argue a must do. Here's how I did it. Uh, two-way tape. So I started off with two-way tape on the outside. So you see there's got two-way tape there on the outside. And on the inside, I put a bead of silicone. Why would I do that? Well, I wasn't sure what was going to stick the most, and I know two-way tape won't stick forever. There are a number of projects that I've done where after a year or two, um, it just peels off. I mean, even now, it's not doing a very good job. And the last thing I want is this thing to get sucked in, this um, fabric, or even the two-way tape to get sucked in and mess things up. I don't know what it would do. So having the silicone around the inside means that even if this two-way tape comes off, it's not going in. Uh, and even if this stuff ends up coming off, hopefully it won't end up coming off. Uh, it, there's a little bit more, so it won't do that is what I'm saying. All right. So that was the third one. Must do things to ski do rev. Uh, starter spring. Spring on the oil arm. Do your best to make sure that the brake dust from your belt is not going to be pulled into your airbox. And that from the outside... Uh, you're not going to get smaller contaminants like, well, snow. One of the things I noticed also is that this fabric, sorry, the inside fabric, the, the heavier sponge type stuff, uh, when I was shaking it, there was a lot of dirt coming out of it. So this will help just in general to keep dirt out because I just, it just, it was, it was great. It was like a dirt magnet for some reason. There you go. That's all I have to suggest for right now. All right, I was wrong. I thought there were three must fixes on every ski do rev between 2000 and 2003. I can't remember when they started in 2007. There's actually at least four. And here's the fourth one. Let me turn the light on. Uh, since I had this, I've had an issue getting this cap on for the rad. It was just the rad reservoir. It was just always so annoying. So I bought a new cap. New cap is 15 bucks. Not a big deal. I was checking these sides. Um, if, you, if you go online, some guys recommend pinching those down or out just to try and make it go on well. Uh, and that didn't work. That didn't change anything. And I was staring at this cap over and over again. I'd be staring at this cap. Uh, the whole, and I couldn't figure out, it, it didn't look like it was warped. Guys have been complaining online that the heat warped it. And then I figured, you know what, um, for the 10 bucks, that piece of metal in there, I got mine from Royal Distributing. It's called a uh, radiator neck insert, uh, coolant reservoir insert. And surprisingly, 
uh, I guess it really was warped because all I had to do was slightly pinch the side with some pliers because you don't want to wreck the plastic. Slightly press the side. Somebody's moving in next door. And then just shove this cap in. I keep calling it a cap. Shove this whatever it is in. But making sure at the very top so that hole is still available for excess coolant to go out. And guess what? This thing goes on so well. Just pops straight in. No forcing it, no grieving, no swearing, no yelling. And I'm not afraid, as I was every time, that I was stripping the plastic around the edges. Now I have to wash my hands. One of the things you don't want to touch is coolant. Did I get any on me? Maybe a little bit. Coolant is nasty stuff. Um, can chew through paint, I'm told. Anyway, so that would be number four. Now, if you wanted to do, you know, another $15, no, it wasn't even 15 it was like $12 fix, that uh, neck thing cost 10 bucks plus shipping here in Canada from Royal Distributing. This would be the fifth thing, if you wanted to, another oil cap. This is the one that came with the machine. For some reason, when I try and get that cap off, it is always freaking tight, and I don't tighten it super tight. And even if I did tighten it super tight, you would think, because it's an oil reservoir, that this would be all nice and smooth on the inside with oil, and it would just slip right off. But it doesn't. And the teeth are lame. By contrast, this puppy, again, don't put it on too tight. So much easier to get on and off. Night and day difference. If you happen to get one of these from Royal Distributing, if you're in Canada, the first one I got of these, this centerpiece, this cap, popped off while I was riding. Actually. Uh, and it popped off, and I don't know why it popped off. It just did. And the problem with that, so you have to really keep an eye on that, the problem is that it sits open like that, like a little funnel and snow gets in here I don't have the side on or I'd show you but the snow came in just dripped right down from the top or floats down from the top through the grates through the vents and of course funnels into that I was deeply unimpressed when that happened um, the water stays separate uh, separated from the oil so I'm not worried about the water getting into the engine the water is not going to get into the engine but it's going to sit on the top of the oil tank I'm actually going to leave this off for a few hours just to let things dry. I'm not going to be mucking around with it. Let it dry. Uh, so definitely uh, something to consider is uh, putting a little glue. Just to make sure. So I put a little bit of crazy gel, gel crazy glue here. Gel crazy glue there. Just, just to make it before I put it on. Because I didn't want the oil to get on it before I did it. And that will just make sure that that's not going to pop off. You don't want to put uh, glue all the way around this because you, you still want it to vent. You, there's a hole that's still there, it's still open. You want this thing to be able to vent. Um, if it's creating pressure, there's check valve and there's an overflow and what have you, but you still want this thing to be able to vent. So don't put that, don't put that too uh, heavily around the glue. What else? Yeah, so that's five things. I, th I was sure there were three things, but I guess now we're up to five things that you should probably do to your Skidoo Rev. If you wanted to get six and you wanted to get really uh, picky with six, you should put on some uh, of these. Uh, they're, they're either called liners, tunnel liners, if you're looking at a do Skidoo part. Or uh, some people call them tunnel braces, but when you Google tunnel braces, you sometimes get the braces that guys put on the actual tunnel uh, beside the engine. All right, I digress. Hope that helps. It uh, certainly would have helped me to know that ahead of time.